Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and we're building this 41-foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, in this special edition of the Sea Dreamer Project, we're going to be building a small-scale replica of our composite hull structure as designed by our naval architect, George Bueller. And that's to coincide with a special announcement about the project that we have coming up right after this. All right, so here is the mock-up of our composite hull structure, and the reason I took the time to do this is because we've recently been invited to attend the Wooden Boat Show in Mystic, Connecticut. Now, the show runs from Friday, August 20th through Sunday, August 22nd, and we will be appearing in our booth on Sunday, August 22nd from 1 to 3 p.m., but I'll pretty much be on the grounds all day Sunday checking out the show. I've never been to a wooden boat show before, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing the various projects in and out of the water and meeting some of the various vendors. Now, Bob from The Art of Boat Building is our point of contact, and he's working with a few other content creators on YouTube who are building wooden boat projects to appear throughout the entirety of the festival. Like I said, we'll be there from 1 to 3 on Sunday, but there'll be uh, different content creators for you to meet and see their projects up close all weekend long. So if you're in the area of the Mystic Seaport or you're already planning on attending the show, make sure you seek out and find out where this booth is. I'm not really sure myself, uh, but it can't be that hard to find. And we're really looking forward to the opportunity to just say hi to some of our viewers, the opportunity to say thanks to people who have been following along and offering so much support for so long. So I really think it'll be a fun experience. And actually, I'm glad that I took the time to do this because it was a nice chance to put in a lot of stuff that was just theory coming out of a book into a real world application. We took some shortcuts, you know, like this paint is not, uh, you know, total boats epoxy paint. This is just spray paint for demonstration purposes. But seeing how the different materials interacted and how it came together was a nice learning experience for me. Granted, it's a lot easier working on a hull structure when it's laying flat on your bench. But nonetheless, it was still a nice opportunity to see how some of these things came together. And if you want to see the intimate details of how this composite hull structure is built, that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, I know this announcement is kind of short notice, but we were only notified relatively recently as well. So the purpose behind building this was because I wanted to have something to show that was representative of our project. And I thought something that would be relatively easy to do, but still be impactful, was a demonstration of our composite hull. My goal was to make this as accurate a representation of our finished hull structure as possible. And I tried to follow all the steps as closely as I will in the real world on this smaller scale demonstration. Since I'm a guy who can't seem to throw anything away, I had plenty of leftover stock from the actual build itself, including cutoffs from the planking, pieces from the framing members, and I just incorporated all those pieces to make this as realistic as possible. Now you could certainly build a diesel duck with an entirely plywood hull. It would just require the additional installation of some stringers along the sides, similar to the build stringers that we did in the lower parts of the frames. However, the designer, George Bueller, highlights in his book an alternative method of planking, and that's the composite method, which we have chosen to do. The composite hull method offers you a little bit more flexibility in the application of your plywood layers because I can drive a fastener pretty much anywhere in the field of the plywood, and it'll hit solid wood beneath. The additional benefit is that on the inside of the boat, you get that authentic solid wood feel, that beauty of natural wood on the inside in areas not covered by cabinetry or other systems inside the boat.
And I've been toying with the idea of how to attach the plywood to the solid wood base layer. And the designer specified the use of small deck screws. But I've been thinking about the speed of using staples. Now all I have in my possession is an 18 gauge narrow crown stapler. But when we get to the actual part of the plywood skin on our boat, I was thinking maybe if I purchased a wide crown stapler, a construction grade staple like they use to build pallets, that might be a nice robust fastening technique that would be very quick. But for demonstration purposes here, and just to try it out, I used what I had being 18 gauge narrow crown staples. And they do make 316 narrow crown staples, um, but I chose to use some less expensive galvanized staples.
All right, I think this is a good example of our composite hull structure with all the layers and steps that are involved, from our solid white oak base layer to a coat of wood preservative to our flexible membrane, then the first layer of plywood with a scratch coat of epoxy and a seam, then a layer of thickened epoxy followed by another layer of plywood with another scratch coat of epoxy, then glass, then another coat of epoxy to fill in the weave of that glass, and then a finished coat of paint. And this is a fairly realistic representation except for a couple things. For, like I said, the paint, I didn't take the time to use a two-part epoxy paint from Total Boat. I just used some gloss spray paint for demonstration purposes. And then the other thing was our flexible membrane between our solid wood base layer and our monolithic plywood skin. We need something that remains flexible between those two layers because the solid wood base layer is going to want to have a little room to move, whereas the plywood is much more dimensionally stable. My original plan was to use tar like we've used so often in this project, but I didn't want to use it here because I didn't want it getting all over my hands when I'm moving it around or in my car when I'm transporting it or when people are looking at it up close. So I used that Flex Seal product, which, you know, you see it on TV, it's kind of gimmicky, but now that I've used it, I'm trying to think of a reason why I can't use it in the real world. Tar is cheap, but it's difficult to spread. It is very time consuming, very labor intensive to do, and it's a mess. And the Flex Seal stuff flows so smoothly and spreads so easily. Besides cost, I'm trying to think of a reason why I couldn't use it. So I'd be interested in hearing what you folks have to say. You can leave a comment below about you know why I shouldn't use a product like Flex Seal as a flexible membrane between the solid wood and our plywood. So I don't know. Luckily, I have lots of time to think about it. We're a long way off from that point in the project, but um, it's something that's rolling around in the back of my head now that I really want to think about. And that's pretty much it. So if you want to see this demonstration up close and personal, and you're in the Mystic Seaport area on Sunday, August 22nd, we hope that you'll stop out and say hi. Otherwise, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.